Paul didn't start this venture by calling for people to vote for him. Um, he started by asking questions, important questions, and he listened. This is the hallmark of a really, really bright mind. Um, on the weekend, I ran into Elizabeth, uh, Paul's beautiful and talented wife, and uh, I asked where Paul was and discovered that uh, on the weekend, just days before this campaign launch, uh, Paul had taken a bunch of Hebrew youth on a camping trip up north, far up north. Quite, uh, quite telling about Paul's character. Um, Paul does things. He's not an empty suit. He doesn't talk a million miles a minute in a million different directions. He's a thoughtful person who gives to his community. Uh, he's been doing that for years, since he was a teenager. He's been giving to whatever community he happens to be in. Um, right now, we're at a point in Peterborough where we really, really need bright minds at City Hall. Um, people who think and people who do and Paul is both a thinker and a doer. For those of you who don't know Paul uh, all that well, he's been involved with the GPA EDC. He sits on the board of the Peterborough Youth Commission. He's volunteered at the Lakefield Animal Shelter. He's into some pretty cool things like skiing and judo, and he's a pretty talented artist too. Um, I didn't grow up with Paul. I'm not a long-standing uh, work colleague. I'm not even a long-standing friend of Paul's. I have absolutely nothing to gain by standing here talking about him. I don't owe Paul anything. Paul owes me nothing. Um, I'm here because I'm a fan. And the reason I'm a fan is because there are two kinds of people that go into politics. Um, People who go into public service for what public service can do for them, and people like Paul who go into public service for what they can bring to public service. Paul is a giver. I voted for Paul um, because I think he will make an exceptional representative for Ashburn. And I 
investigated this through my master's thesis at the University of Ottawa at the St. Paul University. And I, I'm looking forward for my approach to facilitate a process that strongly represents the taxpayers. So the problem lies in, in the fact that our political representatives are free agents. They can make decisions independent of citizen interaction. And really, the only time we really have to hold our political representatives accountable is at election time. And that limits people under the age of 18. But the Community Voice Engagement Project, which we brought in this campaign, is not limited to age. It, it, it includes everyone. And, um, and this is important in really holding our political institutions to account. So before formulating and releasing my platform, I knew I really needed to understand the community. And as well as document the opinions of the demographics of the community. So I did this through a variety of means. First I looked at Statistics Canada. Then I looked at some historical data in the, um, through media, as well as uh, what's available at City Hall. And then we use this community voice engagement project. So I'm very glad to say that we, we, we've gone well beyond our minimum sample size to have a statistically relevant project. And our participants aged from 13 to 92. And in fact, we found other means of approaching residents, such as the art uh, that um, youth we're able to describe what they want for Peterborough to look like. So we've, we've reached all age groups, really. I'd like to just bring our attention to the, to the GIS, the Geographical Information Systems Mapping, that's just on my left here. And really, this is, this is one core aspect of the campaign that it, it's important on a, on a number of levels. First, it, it gives residents an idea of, of where certain issues are prevalent in, in, in the community. So for example, this map is, the, the question was, um, how do people, what are their impression of community as a place to live? So we can see uh, in Ashburnham, people are you know, pretty pleased. Uh, over 90% of, uh, of residents feel that you know, Peterborough is a great, good, or excellent place to live, and I think that as well. But we have like an area of intensity down in the bottom, and maybe this will give myself, as well as city staff, residents, an idea of where we need to look at certain issues. So this was just one map. Um, we have a second map under here. This, this was. The question was, how satisfied are you with the value you get from your municipal taxes? So as you can see, um, like red is dissatisfied, orange is somewhat dissatisfied, and then the greens are somewhat to completely satisfied. So it seems very, there's not too many people completely satisfied with their taxes. But we do, again, we have areas of intensity Really, it's good on a number of levels for myself because it'll help me streamline public discussions so that first, I'm not wasting anyone's time. We're going to an area where people are concerned with a particular issue. And secondly, we're making it accessible to people. So this is what this technology brings. I really think leadership is a responsibility and it's not a privilege. And this is the extent that our leaders have to go to really represent residents, taxpayers, and citizens. So based on the Community Voice Engagement Project, and using these GIS mapping tools, I will meet with neighborhoods to work towards my five priorities to contribute to Peterborough's vibrant future. So my vision is to bring effective leadership through continuing this community voice engagement project 
with all Peterborough <coughs> residents, and when elected to ensure a vibrant, diverse, and dynamic community. The, the first priority I'd like to highlight is in regards to employment, job creation, and youth retention in our community. And it's the leading concern in the community. 50% of the people who identified employment as an issue said that jobs for youth is their biggest concern because grandparents and parents of this community want their children and grandchildren to stay in the But it's not only about the youth, it's about families too. People want to stay in this community because as we saw in that first map, it's a great place to live. So we really, I am going to work with community organizations, community business organizations, and we really need to attract innovative and green businesses of the future to Peterborough. This will bring attractive jobs and retain the youth and families in our community. Now the second priority, you know, I, I think it's a sore spot for everyone, is in regards to taxation. And I really want to bring something unique to addressing the issues of taxation. First of all, we shouldn't be raising taxes past the rate of inflation. We really need to understand how we're spending things and that we're not wasting money before we decide to raise taxes. But most of all, what residents really want to see is just communication as to what their taxes are being spent on. And that is something that I will focus on in the upcoming term. But we, in terms of representation and accountability, I would, we really need to facilitate this community voice. Take it Peterborough-wide and bring it to council to represent the residents of the community. Another priority is a really important one, environment, culture, and heritage, something that is very vibrant in Peterborough but we really need responsible development of natural, cultural, and heritage assets in this community. And this will attract families, seniors, and tourism to make Peterborough a destination of choice. Now in regards to the environment, people really want to see green ways in our community. We were about to get it a couple of years ago, but it seemed to disappear, but it is the highest desirable service of Peterborough residents. In regards to recreation and local development, development is, is happening everywhere. And residents really want to see responsible development. But we need to integrate recreation into our development and not just put houses up. We need to integrate the proper amenities and community spaces so that seniors don't have to relocate to be closer to these community spaces and it brings things closer to home. And last but not least, um, transportation and community uh, safety is really important as a priority. Um, we, we really need to address traffic, congestion, and corridor. But there's no single solution that's going to solve the problem. We need to think outside of the box. We need to think of other communities and other best, best practices that communities have used. And if we make the community safer by increasing police presence at night, lighting our uh, pathways with solar lights, which Huntsville has solar lights in their, in their community, so um, this will enable people to actually transport themselves using alternative means than just a vehicle. So most importantly, I think what I really want everyone to take from here is that we need to reach out. We need to reach out to our neighbors, our family, our strangers in our communities. We need to reach out to everyone. And because we can't win an election without votes, I can't win an election without your vote. So tell people what we're doing as a community. Tell people what you learned here today. And be excited about it. Because this is where we're going to change how politics is done in Peterborough. So 
So we need to reach out. And in the upcoming election, vote Paul Zalecki for Ash Burnham Ward Councillor for a stronger representation in Peterborough. Thank you.